we're all here. I, I'm not going to wait for the <laughs> minute to. <laughs> Okay, welcome everybody. Um, we are at the community input uh, portion of the board meeting, and Kristen Hopkins, do you have something you'd like to share with us? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you don't mind. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I just I wanted to stop in tonight. I haven't had a chance yet to make it here this year, so. Um, I hate to say this in November, but welcome back. <laughs> Hope the school year's <laughs> off to a great start. Um, but um, I just want to share a, a couple quick PTS up updates because it's that time of year. Um, and that is Friday is the 36th annual R.C. Buckley Thanksgiving Feast. Mm -hmm. um, it's awesome that this tradition continues. You know, I'm starting to see a lot of um, families, you know, the generations are starting to come through. You know, it's my age group of, of kids that are now coming through with their kids, which is pretty exciting and sadly reminds me that I'm old. Um, <laughs> but uh, we desperately still need about 20 volunteers. So thank mm -hmm. you, Christine, for already volunteering. I know Walla is as well. So, um, so I'm really here to just, you know, help spread the word that we still need some volunteers to, to sign up for the day. Um, I'll let Lori give more of an update, but we're keeping everything the same. You know, we're working with Sandy to be sure the meals and logistics and everything work out so that it's safe and everybody has a fantastic time. Um, and then also, um, we are starting to partner with the middle school and high school um, guidance counselors, social workers to get the holiday giving trees online. You know, as we continue to see the need across our district to help ensure that students um, that need it have a you know wonderful winter break and Christmas holiday um, we're partnering again with them with those you know partners parts of the school to get that giving tree online um, it, we get all of the information anonymized so the confidentiality remains intact but that will go up hopefully before Black Friday so that those who want to um, shop will be able to hit the sales and whatnot, but that'll be up for a few weeks. Um, so look for that. We'll be sharing it through the PTSO channels as well as um, the buildings, I'm sure, will be sharing it as well. So those are a few things that we have coming up, um, and I just wanted to share that and say hello since I haven't yet made it here this year. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them. Does anybody have a question? I, I, actually, you know, I do. Are you finding that it's um, becoming more difficult to get people when you ask for volunteers? Um, yeah, it, you know, it, it, just like with any um, organization that relies on volunteer support, whether it's from athletics or El Tapo or general school events, um, parent engagement becomes harder and harder to drum up in terms of new faces. You know, you start mm. to see um, the same people over and over again. Um, and so, eventually those of us who always show up will not be able to show That's up anymore right, yeah. and so you know we've done a lot of brainstorming on and how do you engage parents you know but as our schedules are as we are over scheduled um, and are committed to you know work and our phone and being on call 24 7 it does get I mean it's a legitimate concern going forward it's actually something that we experienced last year for the first time when we actually had to cancel an event or two because we did not have the volunteer support to be able to even run it, um, which ultimately just boils down to it's a disservice for our students, right? It just takes away an experience for them that they may not have be able to get anywhere else or be able to have had in the first place. So, um, so we do. We even see it with our high, our high school volunteers in terms of you know, as they're overscheduled and stressed out and, you know, have multiple different priorities that their ability to volunteer also is, is diminishing. So, mm -hmm. you know, we still, you know, do our outreach the best we can and leverage multiple messaging tools. But um, I think it's something that everyone's face. It's not specific mm -hmm. to Lansing. Yeah. It's not specific to the PTSO. It's nationwide. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll put our heads together to try to fix that one. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming tonight. I can with that, with the scheduling too, there's a schedule somewhere on the school web page, or how do I find the uh. slots for uh, to sign up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, so it is available on the Lansing PTSO Facebook page. There was also a news post that went out through the district news on the website, and all of the sign up information is in there. Thanks, Aaron. Anybody else? 
All right, thank you so much. Um, first up on the communications is the superintendent's report. Now, just a reminder that some of us attended the NISBA uh, conference a, a few weeks ago now. I just want to read to you um, a list of some of their uh, trainings, which kind of was the, I think, the overview. Uh, just so you get an idea of what uh, school districts across the state are talking about. Opioids and opioid uh, epidemic, school climate improvement policy and practice, creating a trauma-informed academic environment, regional crisis team crisis response, communications that, and strategies that improved our school climate, addressing mental health, suicide, and school culture. And that's probably about a third of everything that was offered or more. Uh, so this is the topic that's that's happening. It's a regional initiative, statewide initiative. I'm sure it's a national initiative as well. So you'll be hearing a lot about that and a lot of those uh, key words that I just talked about. I'm sure we've we've talked about previously. Um, so I tended a lot uh, to do with um, school culture and climate. As you know, we have task force that are coming up. We sent the final invitation out today. Uh, the task force will be meeting on the 19th, and it is a closed meeting because it's a work group. It's not an open presentation for the community. Uh, these are people that have um, self-selected to, to, to participate based on the um, email I sent out a couple weeks ago asking for participants. And then we will be sharing out the information as we go along and, and get gathering input and working in our smaller groups. But we have a, uh, each building has a task force. We're doing an inclusion special education task force and an athletics task force. And overall, there's about 85 people involved on, and throughout all the committees. So um, we're looking forward to, to again, getting that started, kind of taking advantage of people's interest and kind of sense of urgency around school climate and um, mental health for our students. Uh, the athletic director is not here tonight, so I just wanted to wrap up some things for uh, the weekend. We had uh, a number <coughs> of girls and one boy that attended states for cross country, and a couple of them um, had new personal bests while they were there, and we, did, we had a great showing for our cross country teams. And as you know, boys soccer was uh, won the Class C state championship again, uh, two years in a row. One year is impressive, two years really impressive. And I would just like to thank um, Deputy Thompson, because he kind of helped lead the uh, brigade home and uh, helped me organize with one phone call to him, got everybody together um, to, uh, to welcome them. I think started out on way out. <laughs> Yeah, so we're able to bring them in oh, and, and greet them, yeah, and uh, the number of um, our community members that came out to welcome them, to just support them, because, you know, it's, it's been uh, a rough couple of years for them, and they really came through and been doing great work. Also, Sergeant Slocum, Deputy Ninajit, uh, thank you, <laughs> Trooper Stark, and Fire Chief Scott Purcell. They all kind of really came together, and I just had to make a couple phone calls for that. Um, I have been reaching out to our local spiritual leaders to just to make some community connections. And uh, I met with um, Dave Quigley from Asbury Church on Friday, and this is really for the principals. Um, they are making 10 uh, Thanksgiving baskets for us to hand out to families. So I'll work with you to determine where that should happen. They will be here on Monday. So uh, let's work together for that. So I appreciate those connections. and. Um, the support of the school from our, our uh, spiritual leaders. Any questions for Chris? So that meeting uh, where the task forces are getting together, is that in the LGI? Uh, yeah, LGI okay. room. What is the room capacity for that, like 100 or something? I think it's about 100. It, well, it all depends on how, how, yeah. we, how we kind of, Ish. yeah. So the first that'll be fun. Yeah, <laughs> everybody will be well behaved. Yeah, so keep them together. Um, so we, the first hour will be there, and that's when we're gonna have a large group kind of get us all on the same page, looking at our mission and vision and our our various roles, and our purpose of the uh, task force, and then we're gonna branch out to classrooms. Okay, great. To do our our uh, each individual work. <coughs> okay, thank you. Um, next is the school business administrators report, Kate. I also attended a conference late last week, um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, with a lot of good stuff on the future of school finance and school reporting, some of which I'll be bringing to you over the next couple of board meetings um, to ease you into it. I'll also be working with our admin team because it'll be bringing some changes in our building levels as well. 
um, but there was some really good stuff that came out of that. And I will say, even though we typically focus on finance, there were several sessions that were also about school culture and how do we change the culture of our school. So it's not just on Chris's end, it's on everybody's agenda. Any questions for Kate? Okay, thank you. Next we have bit, uh, principal's reports. Hello, this, I'm Lori Whiteman from the elementary school. Uh, I want to say thank you to all our students, staff, and faculty for another great month of fun and exciting activities. We had, um, last time I talked to you guys, we were getting ready to see Eric Litwin uh, coming down to the assembly, uh, to the auditorium. Amazing. Kids singing and dancing. Um, surprise, very wild and fun. It was a good time by all. And then just last week, we were uh, blessed to be able to go down to the auditorium again for Annie Jr., the preview. So many kids singing the songs on the way back. It was awesome. Middle school kids did an amazing job. We are currently at 450 hot off the presses for K to 4, up one from last month. Um, repeat of yes, this is the 36th annual uh, Thanksgiving feast is Friday, which is a, tr a wonderful tradition. Um, same setup as in the previous. They'll come down, we'll eat, they'll go up to the gym, do some singing and have a great time. It's, it should be, hopefully, a good weather, and uh, all should be well for that. I do want to say that our PTSO box top celebration is coming up. The elementary school students have earned a dance party, so we are in the uh, nitty-gritty of scheduling that and figuring out school-appropriate music and location <laughs> and all that fun stuff. And also attention to all fourth grade students and families. The yearbook cover contest information it has come out or will be coming out this week. Those contests are open to fourth graders. We choose uh, anonymously. The staff chooses the front cover and then we take the four runners up and we put them on the back cover for the annual yearbook. They're due back to the school by the 30th. This is the Nutcracker year, so we have lots of emails going in and out for <laughs> practicing and rehearsals, and those are coming along beautifully. Lots of dancing going on in early mornings in all sorts of locations. And last but not least, a huge thank you to the Triad Foundation, um, the Park Foundation. We have been recipients of a couple of amazing grants. Uh, the school received two different grants. The first one is for, to provide backpacks of food for families in need for, during the summer months. Um, and the second grant is to increase our sensory equipment needs for our elementary students here in the uh, elementary. So we'll be looking for more information on that and we'll be doing some big thank yous for the Triad uh, Foundation when we get all that settled up and uh, it should be amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Lori? Okay, thank you. Can I add to that? <laughs> <laughs> Am I allowed? <laughs> Is it a friendly question? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, I promise. Um, so just to add on to Lori's exciting news about the Triad Foundation, so the third part of that grant um, is to help support a PTSO initiative that we launched last year. Um, we call it the Summer Campership Program. Um, and so just a quick little history. Um, that The Summer Camp Initiative came out of some conversations at PTSO and Hallie Snow and Lori Whiteman and I were having um, about kids who really just need a positive outlet for summer. And through partnership with um, the Kevin Snyder Memorial Foundation and some community anonymous volunteer donations this year, we sent 13 students to a week paid of summer vacation. Um, and it was that initiative um, and the conversations with Susan Tabrizi and Linda Pasto on the, the food service side um, and having a summer food program that dovetailed into um, some of Lori's needs and looking at food scarcity and food security in general in our building. And so um, Linda Pasto really shepherded that grant request to the Triad Foundation and we were able to pull all three of our um, organizations together to be able to submit that grant to the Triad Foundation, which the cumulative total was $25,000, uh, which is absolutely amazing. And on the campership side, the grant that we received, along with a continuous donation from the Kevin Snyder Memorial Fund for another $2,000, we will be able to send 30 students, K through 6, um, to a week-long paid summer vacation so they can choose the Myers Park Day Camp or the Adam Heck Soccer Camp because it's a full-day camp. Um, and we'll also have 
money towards ensuring that they have food for a lunch and a gas card for transportation if their families need that in order to make the camp happen. And again, we work in partnership with Lori and because we're, we're able to expand to fifth and sixth grade as well, we'll work with the middle school team um, for them to help identify what families um, this program will benefit. Um, and so again, anon anonymized information and confidential information, we just help the mechanics of it work. But so excited about that, Linda Paso, did a fantastic job um, spearheading that and it's just it gives you goosebumps and it's so exciting to go into the summer knowing that we have this resource for our families and students that need it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Great to see the organization communicating and working together to really get the most out of it. Yeah. Okay. I'm Christine Rivera, I'm the principal at the middle school. There's no doubt that LMS production of Annie Jr. was spectacular. We Kudos go out to all of the directors, students, teachers, parents, everybody who was involved, a lot of volunteer hours to make it possible. It really was great. And I'm continuously impressed by the number of kids who can get involved in the musicals and the dramas at the middle school. And it really speaks to the middle level participation that we try to promote and I really see so many kids just really being engaged. And if they weren't in the performance, they really appreciated the performance. Um, they were an excellent audience during the preview. And I was glad to see so many community members come out to see it. Uh, we had an outstanding response for parent conferences this year. <coughs> Excuse me. Teachers are still making time to meet with parents and guardians as the schedule was completely packed and people are still coming in and even though that's the time of year when we have our initial parent conferences, just the faculty are working really hard to maintain communication and stay open to parents and working together and it's um, noticeably different this year. I feel like there's just been an increase in that and it's really great. We had our wonderful Be the Good focus group project presentations from sixth grade. The students worked together and divided themselves into groups based on topics and um, this is, they've done this now for a couple years so their topics this year were endangered species, habitat destruction, help for the homeless, reduce, reuse, recycle, stories to tell where they passed on stories from generations so they interviewed older people, um, step up which was promoting acts of kindness and stepping up for, um, for others mindful consumers, stress and mental health. Um, they even at the presentation led physical activities and mindfulness activities um, that everybody participated in. The students planned and executed research and then they promote the cause and how to get involved in places and different opportunities in the community. So um, one of the things is we're going strawless in the cafeteria and the kids brought back spoodles which were I don't know, <laughs> MIA at the middle school for a little while, but they are committed. At the end of October, our new school counselor, Tanya Thompson, coordinated some special events in honor of National Bullying Prevention Month and National Substance Abuse, and Pre Abuse Prevention Month. Some events included a poster contest. We had a put a cap on bullying hat day and a mix it up lunch where students sit together at tables randomly and do short activities together during lunch. Everybody really had a good time. We started a different type of reinforcement for positive behaviors through our PBS and PBIS in October. The students fill cards now um, with stickers and then they have a store where they can trade in their cards for special things. Some things like water bottles but also things like sitting in the teacher's chair for a class, having a principal or the dean as a personal assistant, um, games after school, cooking classes, and a popular one, um, they can choose the morning song being played over the loudspeaker. So we've had some <laughs> really interesting and different tunes being played. Um, the uh, receptionist, Tessa Meyer, she works on, on the songs there and she has to look them up, make sure they're all appropriate. She said, I can't believe I've never even heard of these songs. <laughs> so anyway, it's fun. We're having a really good time. Um, let's see. We have some upcoming professional development around assisting students in managing conflict and the faculty and staff will be having some book studies on some books uh, fostering resilient learners which is related to our work with the um, 
trauma-informed classrooms and schools and class-wide positive behavior interventions and supports related to our PBIS work. Then we also have the little book of restorative discipline and a book entitled um, Lost at School. So we're looking forward to having groups who, are, who will be reading those and, and sharing about what they learn. The SEO food drive is underway. Fantastic feasts and where to give them. We have a little um, Harry Potter theme going this year. And if classes reach their goals, they can have a dress-up day for their House of Hogwarts on the 20th. Um, the eighth grade trip is being, um, is being planned as we speak. We're really excited to move forward and ensure that we have a great trip planned for all of our eighth graders coming up. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Christine? Okay, thanks. Good evening. Uh, I know that Chris mentioned some of the successes in athletics, so I'm going to talk a little bit about clubs tonight. Uh, we have a brand new club at Lansing High School. It's the Ping Pong Club, where we have over 40 students coming out on Thursday. They're demanding two days a week now <laughs> to be able to play ping pong. I want to just, this is really the initiative of one young man, Aaron Chang, who came in and said, I think we should do this, Miss Udley, and boom, it happened, along with um, Danielle Lovelace, who's been, who agreed to supervise. So that's really fun. Um, in addition, we have our usual clubs. We have robotics, we have our art club, our chess club, our Yorkers club. SCO um, is organizing their food drive in, uh, to, to align with work that's happening in the middle school, certainly. Our GSA is uh, really strong this year with many, many students involved in. GSA stands for Gender and Sexuality Alliance. So students are really, really active. I want to highlight our Model UN uh, group because they just went to a competition. They did really well. So on Friday and Saturday, 22 LHS students honored their diplomatic skills at the 39th annual Hilton Model United Nations Conference. And uh, being one of the smallest schools of 24 from all over Western New York, the Lansing Model UN was honored with several uh, overall awards. So Ishika Gupta got Best Delegate uh, for the Human Rights Council, Ashley Stambro, Outstanding Delegate for the World Health Organization, and Harrison Wang, the best new delegate for the Disarmament Committee. So many other students received individual recognitions in their committees, but those three stand out overall. Each student was required to research and play the role of their country in the assigned committee, and we had Germany this year, our school did. Most of our students crafted and defended position papers and led their peers from other schools in seeking resolutions for their assigned challenges. And there is no course credit for this. This is just out of the love <laughs> of debate, discussion, and uh, reading and writing. So that's fantastic. In addition to our club activity, uh, we have our <coughs> drama coming up in two days. Our play preview, preview is on Thursday. The play is 12 Angry Jurors. You may know the the movie version of 12 Angry Men with Henry, Henry Fonda, 1957, I think. Uh, regardless, it's going to be really, really exciting. We have lots of kids involved, and they're pumped up and ready to go. Uh, we start on November 15th at 7, November 16th and 17th at 7.30 in the middle school auditorium, and tickets are only $5. I think uh, for anyone who goes, they're going to see, uh, I think one of, I know the movie, I haven't actually seen the play, but the discussion around how decisions get made in a courtroom and some of the biases and own personal thinking that come in and the way in which you can shift that by shifting the dialogue is really timely and just incredible for high school kids to be thinking about. So I hope you will join mm -hmm. us. Our staff have been uh, working and their faculty meetings with folks from BOCES to continue our work on being a trauma-informed school. They've been looking at their own practice of how to be resilient and so that they can reach out and, and help students be more resilient. We've also, last Friday, we looked at the, this whole question of what is stress? What is good stress? What is bad stress? Or distress, as I would say it. And how do we as adults look at that? How do kids look at it? How are those things different? What's taught in health <coughs> class? And what are some of the practices to help students who are in distress? So that's aligned to some of the work we're doing in the, uh, as a whole district, but we'll continue to talk about that throughout the year. Uh, other than that, let's see. We have our fall athletic recognition ceremony tomorrow night. Winter athletics is rolling along already. Uh, Friday marks the end of the first marking period, and report cards will go home on Friday. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Okay, thank you, Colleen. 
Next we have a report from the Director of Special Services. Thanks. Good evening. I'm Colleen Valletta. So planning is continuing with our Unified Sports Program. Our Unified Sports Coach and Youth Activation Committee leader have been selected and brought to the board for approval. Initial conversations are happening with potential players and Youth Activation uh, Committee members as well. A parent information meeting will be scheduled prior to winter break, so if you have a child that's interested in the Unified Sports Program, please watch for the announcement. Um, teachers are continuing to devote time and effort into co-teaching by attending professional development opportunities both in district and regionally. It's really exciting to see that commitment to the work. Um, recent trainings have included the Autism Collaborative Community, uh, co-teaching professional learning community, de-escalation and response to behavior, which all of the elementary faculty and staff attended this past half day on Friday and specially designed instruction. Uh, these help us to meet the needs of our diverse learners and district. Our school psychologists were able to attend the New York State Association of School Psychologists annual conference in Lake Placid recently. The conference proved to be an enriching experience, providing the group with new and expanding research and practices in areas such as social emotional learning, collaborative and proactive problem solving, helping students at risk for suicide, self-care and resiliency, just to name a few. This is National School Psychologist Recognition Week, so I just wanted to thank our three s school psychologists in the district, uh, Far, Ellen, and Dana, for the work that they do and the support that they provide to our students. I recently reviewed our comprehensive ELL education plan to assure that we are providing our English language learner students with opportunities to achieve the same educational goals and standards that we provide for all of our students. And the review helps the district to identify strengths and any areas of need so that we can provide support and training to our teachers in order to continue to improve our practices around servicing English language learners. So that was a really good experience as well. Okay, thank you. Any questions then? Thank you. Do we have anybody giving the um, curriculum report? Uh, no, um, but they pretty much addressed what Lauren was doing because she was part of the uh, development of Friday's half day trainings. Mm -hmm. So just for families, when we do have these half days, uh, it's, it's really a time for us to provide training for our faculty and staff. And the big piece is that our staff are here, our support staff, because often on our superintendent conference days, support staff aren't present. So we're able to kind of work together <coughs> with our support staff and our faculty to get some work done. So there's a lot of, there's a tra was various trainings at each, mm -hmm. at each building. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, Board of Education reports, Pat, do you have anything for us tonight? I don't have anything from our board, but I do have a question for the board. Um, I, we have occasional special events at OT from various programs and celebrations of one thing or another. Thank you, Dan. Did you hear what I said so far? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so I won't repeat, but I had been assuming that, that the notices of those meetings go out to board members of the component districts, but now I'm wondering, do they? Do you folks hear about it when we have special events over there at BOCES to celebrate various aspects of, you know, kids graduating from a program or, you know, whatever the occasion may be? So you don't get those. I don't I take recall any. Typically just the end of the year. Yeah, end of the okay. year. So I think what I, one of the things I will do is I will start letting you know about those. So in case any of you want to come and attend, we'd always be happy to have you. Okay. Great. That's a great idea. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do we have any Board of Education reports? One of the things I'd like to ask, now uh, Aziza, you went to NISBA. Yes. And you did. I did. So maybe at our next board meeting, do you think maybe you could give us a, a little report on some of the things you came away with? Sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and I did send out our board goals. I just uh, wanted to very quickly mention that we, um, I did hear from Aziza um, one addition to holding the board retreat, and that was to maybe hold the retreat with time set aside to address new members' questions. So I've just added that. Mm -hmm. But maybe I'll send this out again and we can talk about it at our next November meeting. Sure. Yeah. I, it, was, it was that and just being a little bit more flexible with that one because I felt like the last one was beneficial, but we had two or three very new members and most of them could not be there, so maybe we should have changed our, the date for that. 
Yeah, you know that's I mean? it's a hard, hard to schedule, isn't it? It yeah. is hard, but just a little more flexibility, including the newer board members, mm -hmm. that's all. Sure. Okay, so we will come back to that um, at our next meeting. <coughs> Thank you, Aziza. Okay, we have, uh, we're postponing the presentations and discussions, so we're on to the consent agenda. Could I please have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any objections, abstentions? That motion passes 4-0-0. Could I please have a motion to approve the terms and conditions for Staff King's employment agreement? So moved. Second. Any discussion? No, this is the, uh, this is us tabling it and bringing it back to discussion, right? Do you want to say anything about it? We had a couple, well, we had a couple questions about the validity of the, what, uh, what, basically what we spoke about earlier. One of the questions that came up was the type of background check. So I had reached out to Staff Kings, and they do do a criminal background check that goes back seven years that is um, nationwide. So I don't know if there's any other questions. And I think the other aspect w was that these people would be in the building when there were not students Correct. in the building. There will not be students. School will not be in session. It will be after 3.30. Okay. Are there any other concerns or questions? There's a criminal background that you Yes. Did. Is there other kind of background? I, I, if they can see if they can, without in the whole detail, what criminal background they do, what they what they look yeah. into, what they do. Yeah, I can find that out. So, but Aaron, are you ready to vote on this because this is an action item? Yeah, they've been yeah they've been doing backgrounds for people for a long time. So I'm, I'm okay. I'd still like to know, but I'm no, okay is, it, is your mic, mic working? No, my mic never works. Oh, there it goes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, any uh, other <laughs> discussions? All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? That motion passes 4 0 0. Could I please have a motion to approve the overnight trip request from Lansing High School Music Department departing November 29th, 2018 to Rochester Convention Center and returning December 2nd, 2018? So moved. Any discussion? What, what is the trip about? Do we know? NISMA Conference Allstate. Okay. It was one student that I saw? Or? <laughs> One student. Like, why is everyone mm -hmm. looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. That's why. I'm <laughs> yeah, I just didn't. We know decide that much ahead about of time it. which yeah. person we're going to look at for the answer. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. It's an is. It's the Nisma. Okay, thank you. Nisma. <laughs> All right. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions. That motion passes four zero zero. Could I please have a motion to adopt and approve the second reading of the anti-meal shaming policy? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? That motion passes 4-0-0. Zero, zero. Could I please have a motion to adopt and approve the second reading of the revised charge policy? So, so moved. moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? That motion passes 4-0-0. Could I please have a motion to accept the donation from tr the Triad Foundation in the amount of $17,500 to the elementary school? So moved. Any discussion? And Lori, this is the... Oh, no, 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 but this is what you were talking about? Yes, this is. And did you have something to add to that, Kate? No, I was going to answer. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? That motion passes 4-0-0. Zero, zero. Thank you, Triad. Could I please mm -hmm. have a motion to approve the revised 2018-19 Board of Education meeting calendar? So moved. Second. Any discussion? It Do you is. Know exactly it, what's changed? It, is it the 13th? May, May 13th. So the date was changed to meet the mandates for our budget calendar timelines. Uh, so, um, good catch. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? 
All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? That motion passes 4-0-0. Could I please have a motion to approve the 2019-20 budget calendar? So moved. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? That motion passes 4-0-0. Could I please have a motion to approve the tentative agreement for the LSSA contract? Second. Second. Who got that, Debbie? Did you, did you get it? Okay. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? That motion passes 4-0-0. Zero, zero. Is there anything else? Well, it's Debbie's birthday, so happy birthday Aww. to Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> she likes when the camera shoots right <laughs> <laughs> I have one quick thing about the volunteers who did come out for Annie Jr. and the parents and the teachers and the students or whatever. It was, it's always so nice to see and it's amazing to see how many kids are on the stage and, and how they look so put together on the stage. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> <I can't. laughs> but thank you so much again. It's enjoyable. And if I could add, it's just so much better having that foyer there for everything oh, to be yeah. contained in that open oh, yeah. space. Yeah. It's really a nice improvement. I just see two fire exits now, and that's what's <laughs> yeah. really <laughs> impressive yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Could I please have a motion to adjourn? Moved. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions, that motion passes 4-0-0. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.